say, I believe believe. that as I release, that I I am storing up treasures treasures in heaven, heaven. and they are coming to me me when I need them. them. And I might need some right now. So if I need it right now, I'm receiving it right now. Otherwise, I have a big bank account to pull on whenever I need it. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If we got this thing called Easy Tithe, it, it, I just gave more money because Eric makes me want to give more money. I don't know what the deal is. I have my mine comes out automatically, but when he talks, he, he must have an anointing for it because I always want to give more. Amen. So I'll say it again. Happy Mother's Day. So I have a few things for a few people. So this is, you know, I couldn't just let the day go by without, without honoring some moms. So I don't even remember what's in these, so you're going to get whatever you get. <laughs> okay, so tell me who has the most children. Who has more children than six? Anybody? Oh, not more children than six? Who has... Who has five? Who? Uh, <laughs> blended counts. All right. How many do you have blended? Five? S- seven? All right. S- that'll keep you busy. Seven people to pray for? That'll keep you busy. Okay. Okay. Who is, who's got the newest baby? What's our youngest baby? They're in the nursery. We have to find out. Who? Well, yeah, the baby in the womb. (laughs) Who's the youngest one? Susan, who's the youngest baby that we have? Oh, my gosh. This was supposed to be the easy part. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Is this our youngest baby mommy? Well, yes, Elizabeth counts. There you go. Happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Okay. And I couldn't be done until... I wanted to honor a spiritual mother, and that would be you, Helen. I always want to say Ellen, because how many of you know she is a mother to Indonesia, as well as to some very important people that we love. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. (laughs) Give, Give honor where honor is due. Amen? Okay. So now... I want to I want to honor all the women. So I'm going to do the opposite of what Eric did. So all the mothers stand up. That's good. Okay. So my face keep standing, keep standing. My favorite way of honoring mothers is to hear from God for you. So when I was praying, I said, Lord, you know, what are you saying to these mothers? Because I could say a lot of really nice things, but it's not as important as what the Lord has to say to you. So this is what he said. He said, thank you for loving your children because they're my children too. He said, thank you that I have been able to count on you to nourish them. Thank you that you... Tell them about my love and how much I love them and how much you love them. Thank you for training them, for helping them grow and for protecting them. Thank you for loving them unconditionally. Thank you for working so hard. Thank you for pushing through the hard parts. Thank you for praying, for fighting, for believing, for trusting, and for standing I knew I could trust you. I want you to know that as you believe for them, I'm believing in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're blessed. Be seated. 
Uh, see? It's so much better coming from him. So that was sweet. I love how sweet God is, but, but how many of you know he's not just sweet? I'm in the not-so-sweet kind of mode. When I was writing this, I'm in more of a fierce, tell-you-the-truth, gear-up mode. And so, you know, this is a season that we need a little more than just an exhortation. What we need is to, to know what we're really grateful for and to honor what God has called us all to do. And so there's a prophetic anointing in this house. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you know what that means. What that means is when, when God is here, there's a word that comes forth with strength because it's not just some person talking. It is, it is what has been gathered from the heavens to release into the atmosphere for such a time as this. And I believe that that is what this is. This is, this is a time that God is going to enable you to make the impossible possible. And so... I know that this is going to be mostly geared towards women because it is Mother's Day, but I want you to know, men, this is for you too. I, I will bring things out for you throughout this message because each one, uh, everybody in here is valid. Everyone in here is needed, and you'll see that a, as we go. So something happens, though, inside of a mother that makes them able to relate to some things that God is doing on the earth right now a little bit better. Because, you know, women, when you got pregnant, something occurred on the inside of you. There was something happening, and you knew that something had been implanted inside of you, and it began to grow, and you, could, you knew and looked forward to the fact that you were going to bring something forth. You were going to actually birth something. And that is impossible. And so, have you seen the size of a baby's head? That is impossible, all right? So you were a part of making the impossible possible, weren't you? Because that is not normal. It's normal in God's kingdom, but that is not easy, okay? And so that's why we have mothers, because fathers, they're out. They're like, you just go ahead, I'll hold your hand, right? Okay, <laughs> so... <laughs> So we can relate to something that is outrageous like that because we have been a part of something that is that outrageous. And so then you bring forth what was inside of you, and it was a little painful. It took pushing through. But then when you gave it the last push, you got to hold it. And that was awesome. But then you hold it, and then what happens next is you need a whole other bunch of skills that you never had before if this is your first time. You don't even know. You're like, what? And every child is different. Do you know that what works for one child is never the same as what works for this? What is that? Right? And so um, it's uncomfortable. It's, it makes you press in. It makes you begin to, to ask other people how they got through it. And so Teresa was telling me about this friend of hers who was having a hard time, she, she took into custody her cousin's child because it was, um, I, I don't know, it was drugs? Yeah, it was drugs. And so she, she adopted her, him, him. Okay, yeah, you should sit right here while I tell this story. Okay, and so this baby is now two and a half months old. But when she was telling me this story, I really got a knowing inside of my spirit that this was for some of us today to relate to. That in her, in her inability, she thought she was not doing a good job, not for her family, not for her husband, not for her other kids, and not for this baby, because this baby cried a lot. And so she found herself ignoring everything else that needed to be done for the day and, and just carrying this baby around. And whenever she put him down, he just cried again and she's like man so she reached out and she's like what am I doing I mean like does anybody have anything to help guide me and can you tell me what to do and so Tirsa answered her and she said she she said I know um I have a friend who adopted a child from another country and when she went in there was a row of 20 beds there cribs and none of the babies were crying 
And when this mother said, why, why aren't the babies crying? Um, the people that were there that were in charge said the, the workers, you know, there's never enough workers. There's never enough time. And, and it doesn't take long for the babies to understand that no one is answering their cry. And so they just remain silent. They quit crying out. Yeah, wow. And so baby, so she said, you're actually doing a good job. Because this baby knows that if he cries, you're coming. And so the fact that a baby is crying or the fact that a world is groaning. The fact that a baby is crying or the fact that the world itself is groaning. The Bible tells us that the the world groans for sons and daughters of God to come forth. And if you have spiritual ears to hear, you can hear the cries of what is going on in this world. You can begin to understand that there is somebody that needs to answer the call. Many people today have just remained silent because they don't think anybody is coming. They've cried out and they've cried out, but there seems to be silence in the air. But the Bible says in Psalms 34, 17, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. But sometimes he's going to do that through you. Sometimes he needs you to engage. Sometimes he's wanting, he's waiting on a person to rise up themselves and say, here I am, use me. He is going to be the one that delivers, but sometimes he needs to use a deliverer. Amen. Amen. And so we know what it's like after we've given birth that when things need to get back into order, you know, you know, mamas, when, you're, when your kid starts being weird. You know when all of a sudden you can feel that they've gotten a little bit distance from you or a little bit distance from God and or or they're in some kind of trouble. You know they don't even have to be in your vicinity. You know you can sit up in the middle of the night and go, oh, Satan, you ain't doing that. You're not having my kid. You're not having my seed. You're not allowed to take away that which God has entrusted to my care. I have promises in the word of God, and I'm standing on the promises. You know what that's like. There's a stirring on the inside because that which you have given birth to, you have a fierceness for that no one else has. You have something that you know that belongs to you, and you're not easily going to let go of it. Amen? And so you start arising up against the plans of the enemy. You start declaring. You get serious. You know those nights that you start walking the floor? You know those nights you start a shikmo shying? You know those nights that you are praying, you are declaring, you are decreeing, you're looking up every scripture that you ever knew, you're reminding yourself of what the word says because there is something that has happened that you have helped bring forth and now you have protective custody. Well, there is something happening in the world today, and God is looking for those people who will feel that stirring on the inside, and they're going to begin to arise as protective custody over what God has said is going to happen, and he's causing them to have to engage in a different way than they've engaged before. Amen? It's not a time to be silent. It's not a time to sit down. It's a time to arise. Amen. Okay. Whew. Okay, so you start making your declaration. You find a scripture. And so you do this. You do like a Jeremiah 31, 16, and 17. You do it. This is what the Lord says. He said, I'm going to restrain my voice from weeping. I'm going to wipe away my tears because my work is about ready to be rewarded. And my children are going to return from the land of the enemy. You start taking the word personally. You start applying it to your life. You start applying it to your situation. And this is how we are supposed to be, all of us, for the world right now. Because God has not just caused us to be 
uh, just hovering over our little brood. How many of you know he's got a bigger picture than that? How many of you know that he's a great big God? He's watching over all the world. He's trying to cause people to see things through from his perspective. And he's trying to get us to arise and look at the situation on the earth and say, not on my watch. And I'm not going to sit around and bellyache and listen to the news and talk about everything that the, the enemy has to say. Instead, I'm going to wipe off my tears and I'm going to stand in my place and I'm going to declare some things because I have some power on the inside of me. And I'm saying that those people that are waiting to be called up and to be called out and into their proper positions in the earth are going to respond to my voice because I'm carrying the voice of God. God. Amen? Whew. All right. So there's some situations in this world that need attention. This is what God said in our word this year. He said, listen, as I say, I am looking for wombs to birth what is needed on the earth. God said that. Okay, so let's, let's sidetrack to what the Bible also says is that there is no longer male nor female. Okay, so all you guys that just said, well, I can't do that. Yes, you can. <laughs> because we're talking about a spiritual dynamic here. There's a spiritual dynamic that is going on that needs your attention right now. And just because you happen to be living in a male body does not mean you get to get out of this. God said, I am looking for wombs that will birth something in this season. He's talking about a spiritual woman. He's talking about a spiritual man. He's talking about somebody who said, here I am. You can come and you can inhabit me. You can come and you can cause me to be pregnant with what is needed to come forth on this land. I am surrendering to you and I am allowing you access to come in and through me to bring what is needed on this earth to bring change amen. amen he went on to say i'm looking for those who will intercede and not count it as a drudgery you know people who put prayer on the calendar or maybe they don't put it on the calendar you need to put it on your calendar and they do it like it's something that you have to do like, okay, I need to pray for three minutes. I need to pray for five minutes. No, no. He's looking for somebody who's going to not just count it a drudgery, not count it as an assignment. He's looking for somebody who's going to give themselves to it and count it as a privilege. They're going to see the earth groaning, and their groanings are going to release the sons and daughters to a new level to bring a revolution forward. So who, who are those people? Oh boy, we got one person here. Who are those people? Anybody here that believes that? That's going to join in what God told them to do. Amen? Okay. So the feeling inside of you is when you know that there's something impossible that is about to happen. It's like with all of the stuff that is going on and all of the things that are being said that is negative, you know that you're a part of something that is bigger than yourself. And so... This is what was happening. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about one of my favorite people in the Bible, and it's Deborah. Oh, wow. I love Deborah. I love this whole story because it's such a depiction of God's heart. It's not just because it's Mother's Day, but it's good for Mother's Day. But, but I have to tell you, every time I read this story, I get something different out of it because God is speaking to us through this story. Amen. So here's what's happening is, you know, no matter how many times God has rescued the Israelites, it doesn't matter how many times he has gotten them out of situations, it doesn't take long before they go back into worshiping other gods, until they go back into, you know, resisting him. And when they do, there's always an oppressor that arises. There's always a plan of the enemy to take over what the plan of God was. And so this is happening again. And so... It says in Judges 4, 1, when Ahu was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So now, is that God's intentions? No. no. And he wants them to flourish. I mean, he's already had Joshua lead them into the promised land. 
They've already been led into the promised land. But when, as soon as he was dead, they, they promised, oh, yeah, we're going to follow the Lord. Don't worry. We're going to do what he told us to do. And then what did they do? They backslid again. They got away from God. You know, when you're having hardships, all of a sudden you start turning and, and, and crying out to God. But as soon as those things are remedied in your life, you settle down. You could cry it out, and then the enemy comes, and then you're too idle, and then you got yourself messed up because you get involved in stuff you shouldn't be involved in. And so each and every time, they're subjected to the process again and again, taken over. And this time, it's, it's Jabin and the Canaanites. So Judges 4, 2, and 3. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in, I can't say those words, those two H's. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, hallelujah, finally. For Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had oppressed them, the children of Israel. How many years did he oppress them? 20. But... The saddest part in the story is Judges 5, 7. The first part, 7a, says this. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel. Eric, you almost took it today. What this means is that not just the inhabitants of the village, but the leadership, the, the chieftains of the village, they ceased they quit operating they were flabby i'm not kidding this is what it says when i looked it up they became flabby they were lacking they were idle they just sat down and rested they just like accepted their fate except for that's not their fate is it they just sat down. When you sit down, when God has an assignment on your life and you decide to sit a spell, when you just decide, well, I, there's nothing I can do. I mean, after all, you know, I'll just sit here because, you know, the Republicans are in place or the Democrats are in place. Nothing I can do because, you know, they're in charge. No, they're not in charge, people. They're not in charge. You're in charge. You're just not taking the charge. And so we, we can't sit, but when the people of God who have been called on assignment, who are called by God to accomplish something, and they decide to just sit a spell and take whatever is given to them, guess what's going to happen? Whatever. Whatever the enemy has plotted against them is what's going to happen. And so now this situation has become intense because now something different needs to happen. They can't just ever, all the chiefs, that means all the leaders, that means all the pastors, that means all the evangelists, that means all the apostles, that means everybody in the church has just decided to sit a spell and they just got flabby and, and they just got, you know, they just sit around. And I see this happening in the church. I see it happening, not every church, not every person, but I'm saying this is a clarion call to people. This is something that God is trying to get us to do. He's grabbing a hold of some people today. He is, he is saying, prophetically speaking, it is time for you to see where you are if you're sitting down or if you're standing up. And if you're standing up, what are you doing about your standing? What are you doing about this situation? Do you see the bigger picture? Are you so intent on what is happening to you? You're for it no more that you can't get out of your own way in order to accomplish the will of God on the earth. And so it's time for us to do what Deborah did. So Deborah was a prophetess in the land. Deborah was, she was, she was judging the people. That all, all of the people of the land were coming in. They were getting wisdom from her. They were receiving from her. And so this is the situation. But it tells us in Judges 5, 7, until I, Deborah, arose. Arose what? Arose a mother in Israel. I couldn't even find out if Deborah had real children, like natural children. Here's what she had, spiritual children. 
one thing we know for sure is that she was brooding over Israel. She was aware of the situation. She became aware that the people that were supposed to be standing up had sat down. She, she became so aware that she said, man, I know God wants us to take position. I know that God has ordained us to take a stand. I know that God doesn't want us to be overtaken by the enemy, but somebody's got to do something. Are you getting this? So arise actually means this. It's a causative word. It, there's, there's a reason. It's a necessity. It means to stand up. It means to stir up. It means to decree. It means to strengthen. It means to raise up. It also means to rear up. It means to establish and it means to succeed. It's time for people to arise again. Deborah isn't ashamed to say that in this case, she's the mother that's going to arise. The word mother here means actual bond of the family. It means that literally and figuratively. It, it comes from a word that means also that you're supposed to break forth like a dam and cause a parting to occur. Now, we know that um, if you have had a good mother, which I hope you have, but if you haven't, God has spiritual mothers for you and spiritual fathers for you. But in this case, God is calling this spiritual mother, and she said, I, a spiritual mother of Israel, I, I'm arising. I'm going to do my part right here, right now. And so it says that she arose, and she was going to cause something to happen to cause a dam to burst forth, and you have the same ability. You, as sons and daughters of the Most High God, have the ability to speak forth and to get involved in whatever spiritual warfare is needed to cause whatever needs to break off of what is holding people back loose so that they can come forward and do what God has called them to do. Amen. Where is my amen corner today? Hello. Somebody needs to be getting this. Amen. Okay, so the situation is at hand. The chiefs and the people are resting, they're oppressed, and they, they were waiting instead of arising themselves. Let me let that sit in the air for a minute. <sighs> waiting, just waiting for somebody else to arise. Just hoping somebody else will get the memo. Just hoping that they can ride this out. Just hoping that they can ride on somebody else's anointing, somebody else's ability, somebody else's prayer life, somebody else who speaks the word of life, somebody else who knows what, you know, somebody's going to do it. Maybe it's the pastor, maybe it's the elders, maybe it's the deacon. What about you? What about you? This is the cry of the Lord's heart. And so... But she said, okay, here it is. Here it is. I'm watching around. I'm looking around. And, and like, they're just sitting down. They're getting flabby. All right, so I'm going to rise. And so she became that mother in Israel. She knew that she was going to have to step into her calling. She knew that her words, because she was a prophetess, carried power. And she was going to, with righteous indignation, step into her position and rise up and release what needed to be released in the atmosphere so that other people could grab hold of it if they needed to. Because that is not a time, this is not a time for you to think, oh, well, I I have to do it, and I'm the one. This is the time to think each one of you has to do it and grab on. But if you are too weak or maybe something's happened in your life and you can't seem to grab on right now, grab a hold of the one who has the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the one who is strong right now. And if you need to ride their coattail right now until you swing up into your own position, then you just go ahead. But whatever you do, don't sit still. Amen. Don't sit still. Don't remain silent. And so God had a remnant. You know he always has a remnant. 
there's a remnant in this house. There's a remnant in the world. There's a remnant in every city. I believe God has positioned people everywhere for every purpose that is needed right now. It's just that people have to have ears to hear and they have to take some action now. It's time to take some action now. And so, so she went, Judges 4, verse 6, she went and she called for Barak. He was the son of Abinium, I don't know if I'm saying this right, from Kadesh. And he said to him, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor? Take with you 10,000 men and the sons of Naphtali and the sons of Zebulun. And against you, I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And Barak said, if you will not go with me, I will not go. Now, here's what's happening. She is standing now in her positional authority. She has stood in her office as a prophetess. This is, this is not the judge. This is the prophet. She's like, okay, here's what's happening. She's going, God has called you, Barak. He's called you. And now he's commanding you to go get your troops together. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to get 10,000 men. These are the tribes you're going to take it from. You're going to get them together, and you are going to go against Sisera and his chariots, but God is the one who's going to deliver them into your hand. And so that is awesome. And so she's standing in her position. And you know what happened in that moment? Is that in that moment, Barak went, the, God's right here. Like, this is not just the words of Deborah. This is the words of God that I'm hearing. And so his response is, is not like a weak man. I think people look at this like poor Barak. He had to have Deborah. He was like, I need my mommy to go with me. That is not who Barak is. Barak is a commander. He is the king of, of, over, the, over the army. He, is, he has to take his position. But he understands that there is something in the atmosphere that is so powerful because she is releasing the word of the Lord. Lord. He's saying, I'm going to go, but I'm not going to go without the word of the Lord next to me. I'm not going to go if you won't go. I'm not going to go and go out there alone without somebody standing with me. You're her. He didn't say, oh, man, I don't know. You're a female. I don't want you to go. He went, huh. you know, God just showed up. And when the word of the Lord shows up, it, you, you, it's like faceless. There's like no generation. It doesn't matter male, female, whatever color they are. All you know is the spirit just changed into the atmosphere. And all you know is you're not going to leave that behind. If you're going to go do a job, you better go do it with the people that God's called you to do it with. You better attach yourself to them. You better be so close, close to them. And you better position yourself properly. And you better say, this is who I'm with. And I'm not going without you. Amen. Amen. Whew. Okay, I preach myself dry. <sighs> Hallelujah. Woo. And so he knew God had positioned them together. How many of you know God positions you together? You know why? Because it's about relationship. It's about authenticity. It's about recognizing what is going on in the other person. It's about valuing their gift. Yes, he had a gift. Yes, she had a gift. And together they were good. Amen. Woo. Let me just sidetrack for a little bit. So, anybody ever heard of Joyce Meyer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, you know, this was a little while ago when she came to the forefront. And, you know, these people told her, you better, you better just sit down and behave and wait for your husband to arise. Because, you know, it's proper order for you to have to have a spiritual man overseeing you. And so, she was like, she didn't know. She didn't know how this went, so she's like, okay, well, he has to be the spiritual one, so, so you, you do the Bible study. Dave was like, what? He goes, I, I'm not called to do the Bible study. You do the Bible study. And she goes, no, no, you have to rise up. You have to rise up. And he's like, oh, man, I have to rise up. So he tried to do the Bible study. There wasn't any anointing on what he was doing. 
Because you know why it wasn't his call, it was her call. But because she was a female, she was told she needed to sit down. And then all of a sudden, she got some information. And she got some information from God who said, there's no longer male nor female, but there is calls, there is dominion, there is positional authority. And as soon as she was willing to tell her husband, I'm sorry, this is who I am. This is who God has made me to be. But you know what? You are amazing in and of yourself. And I'm going to release you to be the man that you're supposed to be. And I'm not going to try to fit you into my mold or anybody else's mold that has pre-designed the way you're supposed to act. I'm going to let you go ahead and be you. And I'm going to go ahead and be free to be me. Is that okay? And Dave's like, thank God. And now he is active. He is in pursuit. He does, he's in pursuit his way. The same way that Barak was in pursuit his way. And the same way that Deborah had to be in pursuit her way. Because we are a team. Quit thinking that, that one is better than the other. You know what's better? When you obey God. That's better. You do what God's called you to do. Isn't that amazing? And then you love and appreciate the people who do it different. The Lord knows we can't do it on our own. It's why he developed relationship. That's why he developed honor. That's why he developed us being okay with other people being equally as important as us. Isn't that amazing? Nobody gets the glory but God. You got that? As long as God is the one getting all the glory, who cares what the components are? You're not supposed to look at the components. You're supposed to look at the glory that goes to him. If we work together and we value each other, all the glory goes to him because we know in and out of ourselves we can't do anything anyway. Amen. Woo. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. And then the third component that was necessary was this little lady called JL. Now, I tried to talk everybody I know into naming their baby JL. I love her. You know why? Because she's just a little, she's just a little housemaker. She's just a little wifey. She just takes good care of their tent. That's all she is. She's just a tent little woman. <laughs> she's just raising the babies. You know what I mean? She's just... You know, making sure everybody has enough milk. She's just making sure that the, the little tent is clean. And, and until. You see, a bunch of people have been like sitting around being slobs. And, and this, this oppressor comes knocking on her door. And he goes, I just need to sit a spell right here. Is it okay if I come in your house, your tent? And she goes, yeah, come on in. She's like, hmm. I know what's trying to come in my house. Come on, mamas. I know what's trying to come in my house. Come on in. Here's some nice warm milk. I'm going to cover you up right here. <laughs> now he's sound asleep. He thinks he's got it all together. He's like, oh, I'm a pe Who is she? Who is she? What is she going to do? She's just a, a little tent mama. And then that little tent mama goes, I see you, and I know who you are, and I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, because I got some weapons that you don't know about. I, I got some weapons that I have utilized before, and I might have utilized it to hit this tent peg into the ground to put this tent up wherever we go, but now I got a different use for it, and the use that I'm going to use for it is I'm grabbing a hold of this tent pen because this is a weapon in my hand, and I'm going to use it to destroy the enemy so that we can be released from the oppression that you have held us under, and she took that tent peg and boom, guess what? Satan lost. And you know why he lost? Because he needed someone who had a voice to release the truth. Who was aware of what was going on that was going to activate something in the atmosphere to get some people that had been laying dormant to rise up. He needed a commander of an army who was going to step into his position, who was
was going to lead some troops, but he was going to do it according to the word of the Lord. He wasn't going to just get all of his troops. He was going to get 10,000 of the selected troops handpicked by God to stand by him to defeat iron chariots. Ooh. And then there was a little woman that had to join the ranks of defeating the enemy because it doesn't matter what your position is. It matters that you step into your position. Oh, you write that down. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> you see, God knows what's going on in your household. God knows what's going on in this house. God knows what's going on in Florida. God knows what's going on in the U.S. of A. God knows what is going on in every country around the world. And God is looking to put together a team of people. A team of people that are going to say, I'm joining with that rank. And I'm joining with that rank. And I'm joining with that rank. Because we have a job to do. And until we are done defeating the enemy and releasing the voice of God, we are not done. Woo! Well, I like it. It's time for people to have take back their positional authority and see themselves a little bit different. We talked about that last week, about how God sees us, how God loves us, how, how our identity has been stolen. But what about now? Did you see it? Did you see your identity? Did you take it back? I mean, we prayed it. We declared it. We did it. Now what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm just going to sit a spell. You better not. Better not because God is waiting on you, Deborah's. Mm. He's waiting on the women of God to be women of God. He's waiting on the women to release what they know they can do. It doesn't matter if you're at home sweeping up the floor. You got tools in your hand. You got something that the Lord has trusted to your care. He's looking for somebody who will be a mother over the city. He's looking for somebody who will be a mother over our area. He's looking for somebody who will be a mother over a country. He's looking for people who will say, go ahead, God. Impregnate me with whatever you want me to be impregnated with. And I am going to brood over this until you bring it forth. But I am going to be an active participant in this. I am not going to sit around and just let things happen to me. I'm going to make things happen for other people. You see, bigger picture means we get active so that other people can get active. What if everybody just sits down and shuts up? <sighs> Lord. Okay, so I'll tell you when the end times. This, you, you want to know when Jesus is going to return? <laughs> he's going to return when there are some activated people who will not remain silent because the Bible tells me that it's not until everybody has heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he is going to sound that trumpet and come back for us. But if we just sit down and we just let life run us over, we are not preparing the way for our Lord. And we are not preparing the way for someone else. Where somebody is waiting for your voice. Do you know that somebody is waiting for your voice? Someone is waiting for somebody who knows God to stand up and say something under the anointing of God and say, this is what's going on. Let's go do something about it. Let's go be who he's called us to be. Let's go do what he's called us to do. Let's no longer remain silent. You know, she, called, she said, Brack, man, you know who you are? She wasn't like putting him down. She's like, you're a commander. You're a commander. God's commanded you. He's anointed you. He's called you to lead armies. She's like, hey, Brack, go. Go. And he's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> smart man, smart woman. We're not going to do this without recognizing and valuing one another. You've got to get over yourself. Oh, my goodness. 
well, you know, the Lord spoke to me in a dream, and he told me I was so-and-so. Really? Well, how about this? You're a child of God. That's who you are. You have the power of God living on the inside of you. You need to just go ahead and throw down titles and throw it at his feet and say, Here, here's who I am. I'm a worshiper of God. I'm an obedient Christian. I am going to do something in this world because I'm called to do it and I'm going to obey. That's it. If, it, if God has anointed you to be a prophetess like Deborah, then that's okay. Just stand and release the voice of the Lord, but don't hand out your card. Oh, God. If God has called you to be a, a commander of an army, don't go out telling everybody about how you're a commander of an army. Don't, don't go around showing them all of your stuff. Don't go out showing them your rifles and your, your tanks. and Don't just show them. Use them. Oh. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, glory. Okay, well... Are you getting anything? Oh, hallelujah. All right. All right, so all you mothers, I know. I'm like, now what do I do? I'm out here. I'm out here walking on the water. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so how many of you mothers, how many of you women, you, you got something when you came in today? Did you get these gifts? Did you get them? Is anybody don't have them? I want every woman to have them. Even if you're not a mom, you know, I, I believe in you. I like to give gifts. Are you a woman of faith? Well, that's so weak. <laughs> okay. So you got a couple gifts here. So this is women of faith light the way. Now, I have to give you instructions. This is going to drive me a little crazy, but okay. Oh, my goodness. It's just like not happening, right? Okay, so first you have to take this light, and you got to remove it from your little. See, it says, women of faith light the way. This is like a little prophetic action here today, okay? So then you're going to take it out of its sleeve, and then you got to take it out of the plastic sleeve because it'd be too easy if it wasn't in a plastic sleeve. And then there's this little plastic thing that you got to pull. See? On the side. Go like that. Woo! <laughs> and now, some occasions call for a more focused light. You see? <laughs> Rich would be one of those occasions. <laughs> okay. So this is the light. That God has given you. Yay! Okay, this is an intensive light. When you're going to shine the light on something that is hiding in the dark, you women need to just go ahead and be the woman of faith that causes the light to shine in the dark. Amen? Amen. All right. This is called a weapon. This is not... Like, this is a prophetic action. This is not really a weapon. But I'm saying your light that God has instilled on the inside of you, you better put your light on. <laughs> of course. Beth, where's your light? Uh, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> you guys better wave your light. Say, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Say, I'm a woman of faith. I have the word of the Lord. It's in my mouth. And I'm going to let it out. And when I let it out, it's going to shatter the darkness. So I'm determined to let my light shine before men that they will come to know my God. And that he is the ruler of the universe. Amen? Amen. All right. Now you get to play with that. Yeah, you take that. Okay, now you got another gift. All right, all you men, I'm sorry about this, but this is the way it is. Okay, your day is coming. All right. Now you got this little thing. This says woman of faith on it too. How many women of faith do we have in the house? 
Oh, yeah, that's better. Now, now you're getting gifts. <laughs> Uh, and you're like a little bit more excited. We're like, okay, I'm a woman of faith. Now I just received. Okay. All right, so now you got to take this out. All right. Now you see this red side? This red side is what you use to get the debris of the enemy off of you. Yeah, just get it off. It's like you can't stay here anymore. Um, uh-uh. Yeah, I'm wearing your... <laughs> you try to sling that on me? I ain't... Nope. You got to go. You got to go, go, go. No, I'm, I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. Right? But then you got to flip it over. And I, Now listen, this is the instruction. You are going to so mess this up. Okay, so if you, if you hold it and it says women of faith, there is, you, if you look into this mirror, you're seeing darkly because it has a little film over it. Right, so if you pull it from by close to where the woman of faith is, you did it, right? Or from the top, whatever. I had to pull it from down here because I was slightly impaired. Did you get it? When you pull that off, oh, look at how pretty you are. Look at somebody and say, I'm so cute. Now look at him and say, and I'm so powerful. I'm so powerful. I'm a woman of faith. Okay, now that woman of faith thing right there, that is also a file. Now, I just want you women to all take that file, and I want you to go, Deborah, JL, you got nothing on me. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm sharpening my tools right here, you see. I know how to be feminine, and I know how to use my tools. <laughs> the enemy comes knocking on my tent door. I have another tool. I got another weapon, and I know how to knock his lights right out. And so those are your weapons. You'll never feel the same about these little gifts you got today, when I will you. Amen. And so <laughs> you have to brush it off. So I want you to say this with me. I want you to rise up. You're going to say this, women. Stand up. Okay, it's time for you to arise. This is what you're going to do. Okay. So here's what you're going to say. <laughs> the enemy has held me in bondage for years. But I'm about to win this battle. Today, Today. I'm called, called. I'm anointed, I'm I'm appointed, I'm I'm powerful, powerful. and I've been given given the ability ability to arise. arise. So I'm a rose rose. right here, right right now, now. and I declare declare. I'm valued and I have special gifts. God has given them to me and I intend to use them. I will not fear whatever weapon that the enemy chooses to come against me with. I am built to overcome. I am not going to fall for the lies of the enemy. Today is a new day. I am above. I am, I am not beneath. I am victorious. And I'm about ready to bring forth generations into the light in this time frame of history because I can and I shall. Hallelujah. Amen. Now I want you to look at, look at the men around you. Oh, yeah, you're not done. Get back up. Who told you to sit down? Why you people are so independent? Okay, so look around at the men and say, I'm taking you with me. I'm calling you to arise. I'm calling you into your proper positioning. That's good. Now, men, arise. All right, get up, men. Didn't you hear the word of the Lord? Now, men, 
You need to look back at them and say, hey, hey. I'm, I got up. I got up. Now we're going to be a team. We're going to be overcomers. We're winning this battle. And the oppression of the enemy is over because we're standing up. We're not idle. And we're not silent. We're awesome because God made us awesome. And we win. Oh, you guys are working me out today. I finally got you involved in all of this. Okay. <laughs> See, it's going to take, the victory is actually waiting. It's waiting for that to happen all over the world. The victory is ours for the taking. God's waiting for the people to take it. God's waiting for people to stand in their positional authority and recognize their own value and the value of those that he's called you to be with. This is an awesome time to be alive because, oh yeah, we know there's darkness out there. We know what's going on. We can't stop but hearing it. It pops up everywhere. And if I don't see it somewhere, I hear it somewhere. But it doesn't matter if you're hearing the word of the Lord that overcomes what the oppressor is doing. Because I looked at the back of the book, and guess what? We win, because he won. Amen. We don't have to be worried about the enemy. We don't have to be oppressed. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to give in. We don't have to cave in. We don't have to hide in a tent. We need to go in our tent and figure out where our tools are. We need to stand on our position. We need to release the word of the Lord, and we need to find a few commanders who are able to battle with us. Amen. And that's what's happening in the earth today. Whew. God can only take ground when we are taking ground with him. You know why? Because God, God designed it his way. He didn't design it. If, if God was going to accomplish everything he wanted to accomplish by just doing it, then he doesn't need you. But he designed it because he wants you involved with him. He wants you on your worst day to look into the greatness of him and, and look back into that mirror and say, oh, Jesus, I see you looking back. You didn't leave me. You're faithful. You're still there. You, you never let me aside. You never pushed me aside. You didn't just leave me in some place to just sit idly by. Every time I thought it was over, I felt you calling me to arise. Every time I thought I had to throw in the towel, I heard your sweet voice saying, woman of God, man of God, arise again, take your position and win. You see, it's that army, it's that church, it's that bride that God has been waiting for. It's what he is longing for. It's not for his people to just settle down. It's time to rise up, and this is the clarion call. Oh, I know what that, defi I looked up that definition. He told me that earlier. And, oh, where did you go? Does anybody know where it is? Oh, page 11, thank you, page 11. Okay, <laughs> yes, we know what this means. Okay, a clarion call is a very clear, very clear and strong instruction about what action is needed. Do you think that God has given... Oh, Satan tried to shut me up. Never happened, Satan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. He tried that before. <laughs> no, no, that won't ever happen. Okay. Jesus calls me home. That's when that happens. And then I'll be singing and shouting in victory. Amen in heaven. So a clarion call is loud and clear and hard to ignore. Say, why are you so loud? Because I get to be. Because <laughs> I got a clarion call living on the inside of me. Because I got something that I'm birthing right here. Because I got something I'm trying to activate in this atmosphere. Because I'm not just going to settle for the people that are in here right now. I'm going to reach the whole world with the
the sound of my voice because I'm carrying the very voice of God and it's time for them to arise too. You see, there's no ceiling when we stand in our positional authority. You can't contain this to this little house of worship. You know, we may look like we're few, but we're mighty. And we're not so few because we have helped people all over the world. They're still going. A clarion call that comes from out of the inside after you've been with God that you can't withhold anymore. Something that you know he's bringing forth. Something that you can't be silent about anymore. Something that you're viewing the land and you're saying, I know who you are and it's time for you to arise. So you will arise in Africa and you will arise in Indonesia and you will arise in the islands and you will arise in the United States and you will arise rise in China. Do I need to keep going? <sighs> Wonder why I sweat at the end of the service. Whew. Because God has put something on the inside of us that is not to remain silent and is not to be held down. Until the few arise, the many won't. Mm-hmm. Amen. <sighs> Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So then, what in the world? Shall, how shall we respond? You see, this is, the, this is always the, the hardest thing for me. It's, it's not hard for me to hear from God for you. It, this is what I do. This is what he called me to do. Hear from him, tell you what he said. But you know what? Oh, here's what's hard. Engaging you people. <laughs> it's so true. It's not just me. There is a, the clarion call is loud and clear. Every time we come to church, there is somebody saying something that needs to be heard, that needs to be activated. It doesn't have to be through me. It could be through Eric. It could be through the worshipers. It could be through whoever's teaching that day. It could be through another preacher. It could be from the person who greeted you at the door. It could be from the person sitting next to you because God has put his life on the inside of us and it's time for his life to come out and to be known. But we get to turn on the switcher off. It's just like that little light you have. You can throw that in your pocketbook and you forget that it even existed. You may never use it to light the way for you or to light the way for someone else, but you have the tool in your hand now. What are you going to do with it? That's what this is. This would be the light in the darkness. This would be what we're supposed to apply to our life. What... Which one of these clarion calls are you going to brood over? What are you going to do today with what God has called you to do? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I wish I would have gave you all a light. Susan and Cindy are back there waving their lights. Okay, so here's what, here's what we're going to do. Everybody get your lights back out. You're going to use it again. Get used to using your light. Get used to using your light. I gave mine away. Oh, I got another one. Huh? Yeah, there's two settings. I did try to teach them that, but you know. Thank you. Okay, now, turn off the lights in the back. Everybody, get your lights. That has lights. I'm sorry, it's just women. I wish I would have given it to all you. But you see, when we all wave our light, we light away for everyone else in the room too, don't we? So say, this is an awake up call, and this is our light, and it's called the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to read it, I'm going to use it, and I'm going to call people out of the dark and into his marvelous light. 
I'm not going to forget this day because I heard the clarion call. And I am obedient to the voice of the Lord. I'm determined to take action. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. I'm going to say that in advance. Whew. So, Lord, here's what we are so grateful for. Your light always shines. You always find a way. You always find a person. You always find a way to shine it in the darkest of times you were there. And so, Lord, we honor you today, and we thank you for all those mother's prayers. We do, Lord, but we also thank you for all those commanders, male and female, for all the prayers, male and female, for all of the action that has needed to be taken in the past, the ones that have stood up and stood into their positions. Lord, we thank you for that today, and we thank you that you are faithful. Yes. You are faithful to those you have called. And Lord, we, we honor you most of all, that your name will be honored and glorified in all the earth. Lord, we hear the earth shaking and groaning. We hear the cries of the people. And Lord, the righteous are arising. We choose to arise with you. Thank you, Jesus, for that price to make us able and capable. We love you. Everybody say amen. 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 Wow, I do feel like I just gave birth. I am completely <laughs> worn out. Woo, I need a fan up here today. Okay, so I love you. I love you. But who do you love the most? Jesus. You can say, and my mom. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, thank you, dear son. <laughs> and who loves them the most? And who loves all of us the most? All right. Go shine the light for somebody today. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Woo.